God bless your family. This is Pastor Larry. And as we always say, this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I want to welcome you all, wherever you are in your part of the world. Thank you for being here on this Friday night edition of Moments in the Word. Man, am I excited as always about you all being a part of our stream on tonight. Man, listen, I have a powerful word that I believe tonight will help change your life, help give you insight and re revelation to what God desires from our lives. Again, bless you all for being here wherever you are in your part of the world. This is the place where change begins. We are changing lives that will ultimately impact the world. To all our E-Church family members, we say God bless you. Whether you're watching us on Ustream, YouTube, Periscope, or Facebook, we say God bless you so much for being a part of our lesson on tonight. I'm excited, all right, about you all being here. Listen, you don't know what I know, but I tell you what, I know God has a word that he has in store for us on tonight. And so I'm elated. I'm excited, and I'm glad that you are here and being a part of tonight's conversation. We ask you to do uh, three things for us. Number one, like our page. Listen, that's how I know that you are online if you hit the like button. All right, hit the like button. This way, Pastor Larry knows that you are online. But also, hit that share button. All right, hit that share button, and you can invite others into tonight's conversation by simply hitting the share button. Listen, I know someone else will need tonight's word, and it is my sincere prayer that tonight we fill the chat room up. I know many of you all may be already out. And you're in the street because the rain in Chicago has finally let up. Dear God, the last couple of days, it was rain, rain, go away, but it was well needed. We needed some rain in our uh, our soil. But uh, uh, I pray that as you all send out shares tonight, that others will remember that we're on and they'll be a part of tonight's conversation. And then subscribe. And you subscribe to our page. Every time we come on with some new content, you will get notified and have a chance to be a part of that lesson on that particular night. All right? And so I encourage you, as always, again, to please like and to share our page. All right? Please like, share, and subscribe our page. Listen, I want to hear from you. Again, many of you all have not uh, emailed us. You know, Pastor Larry loves to hear emails from you all. Why don't you shoot me an email, all right, at momentsintheword99 at gmail.com. That's one long word, momentsintheword99. I know it's a lot to type, but come on, momentsintheword99 at gmail.com. I love to hear your request, your prayer request. Whatever it is, listen, your personal faith fight. Why don't you shoot us an email and allow us to pray with you and agree with you? The Bible says, if any two of us shall agree on earth 
as touching anything, it shall be done. That the Father is glorified. And so, if you send us your most uh, urgent faith, your prayer request, allow us to pray with you. All right? Allow us to pray with you and believe God with you. All right? It said a trifold cord is not easily broken. And so, as you uh, send us your request, not only will I pray with you, but our prayer team will join their faith with your faith and participate in the uh, throne of God for your life, that God gives you the miracle that you desire. All right? And so, again, won't you like, share, and subscribe to our page and shoot me an email. Now, you can also call our church line at 708-821-6527. That's 708-821-6527. Let me say it again. That's 708-821-6527. All right? Make sure that you leave us a working number if you want us to call you back. All right? Your first name only and a working number, and we'll call you back and uh, pray with you. Uh, if not, just leave us your uh, prayer request. Either way I go, we'll still pray with you and believe God to meet you at the point of your most urgent need. All right. So uh, how many of you all have been with us as we read through the Bible? All right. Today is Second John. All right. Second John, there's only one verse or one chapter in that, that book. All right. It's 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. Today, we're in 2 John. All right. I pray that you are reading with us through the scripture. All right. 2 John is my prayer that you are keeping up as we read through the word of God. All right. Let me see who we have online tonight. Because I'm ready to get into this word tonight. Again, God bless you all. Let me see. Let me see. Hey, Pastor March, Lady March, God bless you. Glad you all made tonight. Sister Michelle, God bless you. I see you. Tommy, God bless you, young man. How are you, sir? Good to see you tonight. Uh, Sister Barbara Jean Robinson, God bless you. I see you on tonight. God bless you. Maria, I see you. God bless you. I figured you were doing hell tonight. <laughs> all right. God bless you. Glad you made it tonight. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Mr. Anderson, God bless you. Glad you're on tonight. Good to see you. Mommy, how you doing, darling? Love you, girl. God bless you. Glad you made tonight. Uh, Deacon Price, God bless you, young man. Good to see you on the night. God bless you. Minister Price, Price, the right reverend. Bless your heart. Glad you're on tonight. Deacon Taylor, bless you, sir. And thank you again for today. God bless you. Thank you so much. I appreciate your help. Thank you so much. Good to see you on the night. Uh, who else did I miss? Who did I miss? Sister Rhonda, God bless you. Great to meet you. You're on tonight. Sister Lillian. Bless your heart. Good to see you tonight. And uh, let me see. Hey, Elder Green. Bless you, sir. Glad you made it on tonight. And all of you all, if I didn't call your name, it's because it didn't come up. Uh, if, if you're on tonight and I didn't call your name. Hey, Andre, I see you. He says me. All right. Now I see you. I see you, Andre. Hey, Darlene. Bless your heart, girl. Where you at now? <laughs> you, you, go, you, girl, you, you move so fast. God bless you. Thanks for being on tonight. And all of you all who made it on tonight, God bless you. I'm so glad that you all are a part of tonight's conversation. All right, let's pray. Let's dive into the nice word. Father, we so thank you so much. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you, God, for your compassion and the multitude of your tender mercy. We are so grateful, God, tonight that we are here. Thank you for those, Father, who are here on tonight. And God, tonight, since we are here, our prayer is that you would bless our time together. We so thank you. We so bless you. And give your name maximum glory. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right. Now, how did three of y'all leave that fast? I only prayed for like 30 seconds. <laughs> glory to God. And three of y'all going already. Well, praise the Lord anyway. Y'all, let's dive into the nice word, man. I'm excited about tonight's word. I pray you guys brought your pen, paper, 
and ready to write. Listen, don't forget, join us this Sunday. Before I forget, make sure this Sunday, listen, this Sunday at our new location. But for this Sunday, join us at 11, all right, 11 a.m. Hear me, this Sunday at 11 a.m. Make sure you join us this Sunday at 11, all right? Our normal service is at 9.30, but because there's going to be a banquet, for uh, Minister Jerry following the service. And we can't break down and set up that fast. There, there'll be a, uh, uh, the service will be at 11 on this coming Sunday. So don't forget, mark it down, set the clock to it. Now listen, if we're starting service, you all, an hour and a half later, come early. That's all I'm gonna say, come early, get you a good seat, and let's get our hearts ready to praise God and give him glory, all right? Your pastor will be speaking for that morning service. So come on and be a part of that service. All right. Let's go to Matthew 14, 23. Let's go, family. Matthew 14, verse 23. Uh, you know it. It says, and when he has sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. And that's where I want to uh, focus on tonight, that he was there alone. The question is always asked, when Jesus goes to hide out, what does he do? What you will notice, you all, is that many times before he did great miracles of those things, he would go away alone and get alone with the Father. He would go away to pray. Sometimes he would preach all day, pray all night, get up and preach again the next day. You know, dear God, he had a rigorous schedule, but he understood he only had 33 and a half years, but three and a half years to minister. And so he understood his assignment. And so uh, he even told his mother, I must be about my father's business. Point being this, in that he was always doing what it was he was supposed to be doing. And so since he understood his assignment, he took advantage of everything, every moment he could. He said he must work while it is day. For when night cometh, no man can work. Simply saying, your Jesus was busy, but even being God in the flesh, this is the part I want to drive home. Even being God in the flesh, he took the time to spend a long time with God. And here's my question tonight for you. Do you believe it's really worth it to spend quality time alone with God? One of the things you often hear me say is many of us spend time with God uh, after our day is far spent and now things are troubling our minds and our hearts. And we start praying. And while that's good, hear me, that's good. That's good to still away and get along with God. But I mean, when we come with before God, we have no agenda. All we want to do is spend time with God. You know, oftentimes what we do is, well, if you're in, in a, a serious relationship, sometimes you won't always come together and hold conversations. You may want to get together and just sit on the couch and maybe watch a movie or cut the lights down and listen to music. You know, not really uh, talking, but just being in each other's presence. Well, listen, family, this is what God loves. God loves to just have some quality time with us. I tell you what, for me, that's, that's oh my God, that's priceless. Where I literally get to spend time with God and just be in his presence. You know, I put some music on and just, Father, right now, just me and you. All I want to do it's been your presence. And you say, Pastor, well, do you pray? Well, during that time, I really spend time just saying, God, I thank you. That's all. Thank you and, and thanking him for being who he is. Thank you for being uh, uh, omnipresent. Thank you for being El Shaddai. Thank you for being the, the all-breasted one. Thank you for being my God. Thank you for being my keeper, my healer, my protector. All these things. And I just spend time alone with God. 
you know, a couple of little music on. And man, believe me, but I tell you, there is nothing like it. You know, I tell God how much I love spending time with him, how much, you know, uh, you know, I love talking to him. And listen, you know, I'm going to tell you something. Not only does it, does it enhance your relationship, but also it gives God a, a, a clear picture on, on our motive and our desire to serve him and our desire to please him. Pastor, what do you mean? See, because many times when we're in God's presence, man, there's so many distractions and things happening around us. And people, you know, always itching for your time. And dear God, you know, if you know, like Pastor knows, you know, spending time with God, I mean, sometimes can be at a premium because somebody is always jockeying for your time. But when you are spending time with God, I mean, that on purpose time. You know, where I purposely tell God, God, today it's about me and you. You know, I was telling somebody today that there was so much stuff happening in the world that uh, I didn't know about, you know, until I was told today. I was uh, spending some time today with uh, Deacon Taylor. He was telling me about the tragic accident uh, that happened in Miami. And by the way, let's make sure tonight we spend time Somebody remind me before I go off the uh, offline tonight to pray for those in Miami. But I forget all about. I mean, I didn't hear about it until he brought it up. You know about those lives that were uh, struck down in Miami, and then I didn't hear about the, the uh, gentleman who uh, was sentenced today for the killing of George Floyd. My point is this. I was so enjoying my downtime, my quiet time alone with God that listen, for the last three, four days, I only I literally I literally only cut the news on uh, the TV on to watch a baseball game. And that was like for an hour at best, because I was enjoying my my time of silence and serenity and just spending time with God. Family, I mean, here's my point. There is nothing that can replace Spending time with God. I mean, having your alone time. And I know many of you all do it even now. But listen, when you do that, I mean, there's such, you begin to develop and build that relationship with you and God. And believe me, that's something you want to develop, that time alone with just you and the Father. And so tonight, I'm going to pick up right here in Psalm 91, verse 4. We've been dealing with this Psalm uh, 91 for the last week or so. And listen, y'all, I pray that you have been blessed by listening to it. But I'm going to pick it right here in Psalm 91. Let's look at verse number four. It says, he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Oh, dear God, y'all, that's so powerful. What we said on, I believe it was Wednesday night, we discovered here that the writer was giving us a word visual uh, by telling us that just like a mother bird, she takes her chick under her wing uh, whenever there's an imminent threat of danger. She takes her, her bird and she, she hides that chicklet under her wing. And this is the picture here the writer here is giving us that God covers us and he hides us. He hides his children. You all watch this from the destructive devices of the enemy. Now, this for me says violence to me because I realize, number one, I'm one of God's children. And if I'm one of God's children, hear me, this promise belongs to me. I'm going to say that again. Because I am one of God's children's children, this promise belongs to me. Somebody ought to put in the chat room right quick. This belongs to me. Come on. Right fast. Put in the chat room. This promise belongs to me. Because, it, listen, it does. This promise belongs to me that God will take me under his wing and he will hide me. You know, it's almost like somebody who is uh, being a mentor. For someone, 
and they take them under their wings. Now, you know, you and I, as human beings, we don't have wings like birds, but we use that phrase metaphorically to suggest we take that person or persons under our, our tutelage, our care, and we care for them. We hide them and we keep them under our wings. But guess what, you all? Because we are covenant children, this promise belongs to you and I, that God who made the universe, God who spoke and things appeared, God who heals, delivers, and sets free, he said, surely I will cover you. And so listen, this promise belongs to me. Now, now the reason, Tommy, I had you to say that because there are some folks on there who don't believe this promise belongs to them. And there are some folk who believe this promise belongs to the patriots or someone else. No, this promise belongs to the children of the Most High God. It belongs to me. Now, understand he did not say we wouldn't be attacked. But because we are his children, he covers us. Oh, y'all, I'm moving too fast, getting way ahead of myself. Because it is our, watch this, it is our natural instinct to run to the place that appears to be safe. Well, guess what? If God says, I'll cover you under my wing, the suggestive thought here is this. Watch this now, Cynthia. The suggestive thought here is, Bless your heart. This promise belongs to me and mother. Look at your girl trying to get brownie points. Bless your heart. The suggestive thought here is that when I'm in trouble, I find myself running to the safest place. And how many of you all know that there is no safer place than running to God? Oh, yes, amen. You can call the police. But there is no safer place than running to God. You can call someone who may carry a weapon, but there is no safer place than running to God. I don't care who it is you may call, and you know that can help you. There is no safer place than running to God. Now, here is the problem, you all, that many times some of us, you all, run to the wrong places. And I wonder how many of us, we suffer, we lose out on things because we run to the wrong places. Pastor, what do you mean? In other words, God has given us a plan, all right? God has given us his plan, the same plan that governed the kingdom of heaven, right? You recall in uh, Matthew chapter 6, Jesus prayed and said, Father, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so what he was saying was that there is heaven's system that he wanted to rule and reign here on earth. He prayed that the same governing rule that ruled in heaven, God, let that governing rule be established here on earth. And so, so it is. God has left us a system family, and this system is what you and I can use to 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 prosper, to live, to enjoy here on this earth. You know, many of us are waiting for the sweet by and by. Listen, death can wait. Come on, somebody. Listen, death can be put on hold. I choose to live here and now. Watch this. In the kingdom of God's system here on earth. See, heaven takes care of itself. I need heaven's established rules to be with me and help me govern my life here on earth. What does that mean? See, many of us do things we shouldn't do. Let me give you an example. The governing rule of heaven to prosper our lives. God never intended for us to live our lives, you all, by the payday loan. Now, if you do it and you need it and you can't believe God and you pay it back, but from what I understand, the interest 
on that loan is astronomical. And many folks can't pay it back on time, which means that's compound interest upon compound interest upon compound interest. When God says, trust my system, right? We have a, God has a system that governs heaven that he's placed here on earth that is designed to prosper you. Pastor, what is it? You know what it is. Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given unto you good measure. Press down, shaken together, and running over. He said, I'll cause men to give into your bosom. Now, I'm amazed by how many people still don't believe in that system. Yet we want things, but don't want to do the first part of giving. You know how the Bible says, uh, one part says to Resist the devil and he'll flee. And yes, that's in there. But we forget the first part that says, submit ourselves to God. All right. Then resist the devil and he'll flee from us. And so we want the latter, the latter part of the verse. But many times we often blot out the first part of the verse. Child, God, listen. The only way to prosper in God's system is to follow the whole thing. We must give, and then it shall be given. You see, consider this. None of us go to our backyard, and we say, uh, backyard, give me a hamburger. No. Here's what we do. We go to the store, the arches, or the king, or uh, I'm not sure what COVID thing is. But anyway, we go to our favorite food place, and watch this. We give them some money. Watch this now. We give them our money. They then, in turn, give us our food. Give, and it shall be given. Give them your money. They give you the food. Now, I don't know any establishment that give you your food first, and then give, and then you and then you pay them. No, because they know some of us. I'm sorry, some of y'all. Okay, some people <laughs> might drive off with that food and never come back over a hamburger or some chicken. And so we give first. Come on. If we go if we go go, go to the bowling the, the, the bowling alley, the bowling alley, the bowling alley never says go ahead and bowl and pay us later. No. Listen, they want to know. Give me something, your driver's license, something that says this is you, that we hold as collateral. So if you don't pay, we'll find you because they don't trust you. Here's my point is this. They know that that, that the, the process is that you give first. And then when you give, it shall be given unto you. All right. And so my point, you know, my point is this. What God says for us to do is to, is to give. That is part of the process where you and I must Give, and then as you and I give, now we are under now. Watch this: we are under heaven's rule. And how many of you all know that when you and I live under heaven's rule, it gets no better than that? Woo! Come on, family. When you and I live under heaven's authority, and we live under heaven's rule, it doesn't get any better than that. And so, again. If you go to the, pay, the payday loan, I understand this isn't a condemnation, but I am simply saying the payday loan, you all, isn't God's best. Consider this. Uh, 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 we, 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 we run to the wrong folk for affection, right? We want other folks to give us what only God can give us, right? We want others to meet a need that only God can provide. And what happens is when we do that, we are now using someone else to fill a need, to fill a void that God is saving for himself. Consider this. Do you think that Holy Spirit or that God would make a man and not put a piece of himself in that man? Woo, let me say it again. Do you believe that God would make a man and not put a piece of himself in that man? Pastor, why is that? 
Because when God wants to communicate with that man, God reserved the right, and he's the maker, he reserved the right to put a piece of himself in that man. So every time God wants to talk to him, because remember now, God doesn't talk to our head. So to Lillian, God talks to our spirit. The Bible says we're created in his image and his likeness. And so since God then is a spirit, he puts, he made us, we are spirit beings, right? And since you and I are spirit beings, Mr. Anderson, God then creates with the spirit he's placed in us. Let me see if I can say it like this. You and I are three-part beings, right? Three. We are first a spirit. The real you lives in your body. So we, we are a spirit. We have a soul. Our soul is our mind, our will, our emotions, our intellect, our reasoning. All right? That's called the soulless area. So we have the spirit and the soul, two different things. But then we have the body, right? The body. The spirit and the soul are housed in the body. See, you couldn't live or survive on this earth without living in an earth suit. This is why the devil can only be on the planet or do crazy things through people is he must occupy a body, right? Satan couldn't come and trick Eve and Adam in the garden. He had to possess what had the right to be here. The serpent, listen, God, God was the one who made the serpent. The serpent just yield his body to Satan. And so it is when people yield themselves to demonic oppression or Satan, he can only uh, uh, um, possess them because they yield themselves to him. Now, here's my point. Because you and I are made in the image and the likeness of God, the devil says, run to people to fulfill a void, watch this, that's reserved for God. And so, yes, sometimes we get lonely. And I know sometimes, you know, we, we, we want to, you know, we want to hug and, you know, touch and, and embrace a person. I, I get that. But watch this. What the devil is doing is setting us up for failure. Right? Because there's some things, it's not that you can't do it. But you can't do it because you don't trust you. Let me see if I can say it like this. There's some places I don't go. Not because I'm not an adult, but because, watch this, I can't trust my flesh when I get there. Because my flesh, listen, you can't trust your flesh. You don't know what your Holy Ghost feel, tongue talking, Bible reading flesh will do when your body, watch this, when your body is going through the changes. Amen, somebody. And so our job is to submit ourselves to God. because. As I submit myself to God, watch this now, even though my flesh wants to go, the flesh is weak. The flesh says, yes, do it. Go there. Do this because you have, you, you, after all, you're human, right? And humans want their needs met. But watch this. Here's the question. Do I desire God more than I desire what the flesh is craving? Come on. Do I desire to be in God's will more than I desire what my flesh is craving for at that particular time? Come on, class. Y'all follow me tonight? Because having physical contact with an empty spirit is really a waste of time. Woo, I'm going to say that again. I said having physical contact with an empty spirit is a waste of time. I'll prove it to you by the Bible. See, over in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, look in the N-A-B-R-E translation. All right? The N-A-B-R-E translation. It says, For while physical training is of limited value, devotion is valuable 
in every respect. Who I'm going to figure it out again. It says, while physical training, okay? Note the word physical. In the text, he's mean bodily exercise. I want to take that and use it for physical contact. He says, while it has limited value, here, family, is the problem. It doesn't, watch this, it doesn't fill the soul, all right? It doesn't fulfill the soulless area, nor does it fill our spirit man, all right? But when we have devotion with God, that's having that alone time with God. Come on. Listen, if you know I'm telling the truth, somebody put in the chat room, I know that's right. Come on. Put in the chat room, I know that's right. Because until we understand, and y'all take it from me, I know for sure enough that the flesh will crave whatever it sees. But there's nothing that you could ever do in life that will ever replace spending that time with God. You see, our I mean, consider this our devotion. That's one of the reasons I have you all reading a chapter a day every day. So we can see what God is saying. Because, listen, I, I ain't sure about you all, but the more I've been reading the Bible, you all, I see things that I already knew, but I get, get to see it again from a different perspective. Because many times what we do, we'll pull out a verse or two from the Bible, but don't read the whole context in which the verse is framed, right? And many times we will quote a scripture, right? but quote it in the wrong context because what we're saying doesn't fit the, the landscape of the text, right? And so if we keep things contextual and, and, and say it in the confines of the text, now we realize that even though what we quote was right, it didn't fit our situation. Here's my point. When I begin to read the word of God and see why while Paul said what he says and read why David wrote what he wrote and see why the prophets said what they said. Then I have a better understanding of now how to use the word of God or watch this or a principle in the word of God in order to get my point across. Right? And so when I see a principle like here in our text, I just gave to you. The, the verse says bodily exercise profits little. Now, that's what it says. But I'm, I'm putting the principle out of there saying anything I do that requires physicality. While in the moment, I may enjoy it. But when it's done, it has no value for my spirit, man. There's no value for my soulless area, right? And so all it's doing is bringing me into a system that does not line up with the system of God. All right? Are y'all here tonight? And so we must then understand that we must do things, you all, the way God wants us to do. Now, notice now, not only does it say the wings provide protection for what is seen, but it also, write this, write this down, it also provides protection from the heat that comes from the pressures of life. Woo, come on. Is there anybody online tonight that know that sometimes life can bring you pressure? Woo, come on, family. I know, oh, yes, amen. I raise both hands, glory to God. Man, sometimes life can be a trip <laughs> and some. But listen, y'all, God never promised us that the road would be easy. Never. But I realize that just because people you all are smiling doesn't really reflect what's going on in their head. Come on. How many of you all have ever had to smile while your heart was hurting? Come on. You smile, but on the inside, somebody crushed you. Somebody bruised you. Somebody offended you. That's why Jesus says, take no offense. Because when I take offense, it it ends my process. And so I can't afford to be offended because of what people do. Right? And so, listen, we must then realize that everybody's smiling, man. There's some folk who are smiling, y'all, 
And oh, dear God, if they could tell you what's going on in their lives, they are smiling. If they could tell you how much they are hurting, they are smiling. But if they could tell you, listen, what you said wounded me. Come on. How many of you all, uh, someone wounded your spirit and you smile? You said, OK. Come on, because what was going on in your head, you didn't want to say. I know on the, on the other day, I was talking to someone, and what they said really offended me. And <laughs> my first instinct was to fire back. Listen, y'all, I'm going to be real, okay? I'm a real preacher. I tell the truth, all right? My first, my first inkling was to fire back. And so I told them, I said, you can't come at me and don't expect me to fire back at you. And they said, well, preacher, what do you mean? And I said, you know what? Forgive me for even saying what I said. Because I should not want to fire back at you. I said, but the real Larry wants to, right now wants to let you have it. Come on, somebody. I'm being, I'm being transparent tonight. The, 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 the enemy wanted to fire back, you know, because I was offended by what they said to me, you know? And so anyway, long story short, I didn't do it because I realized that it doesn't profit me anything to hurt someone who's hurt me. Here's why. Because Jesus said over in, uh, uh, Matthew chapter 5. He says, to do good to them that despitefully use you. Now, how many folks know that's a hard pill to swallow? Come on. You know that's a hard pill to swallow. To be nice to folk who do you wrong on purpose. But watch this. I realize that when God is shaping my life, because, hear me, God is more concerned about you and I being shaped into his image or the image of his son than our convenience and our comfort. Woo-hoo! I'm going to say that again. I said God is more concerned. Watch this now. God is more concerned about you and I being shaped into the image of his son more than our comfort. Now, I know that most of us want comfort, and that's fine. Wanting comfort is not a bad thing. But God is more concerned about, about us being shaped in the image of his son, which means now, watch this, you all, Jesus was spat on. He was beat. Hey, Ella Tori, when uh, I go off, I'm going to call you tonight. He was beat. He was spat upon. Come on. He went to the cross, went to the whipping post with a cat of nine tails. Come on. They put nails in his hands, nails in his feet. They pissed him in his side. Come on. They challenged his deity. They did all they could to discredit him. Satan came and tempted him, saying, if you be the son of God, come on. Yet the Bible said he never on the cross, never said a mumbling word. Come on. Here's my question. How many of us could have lasted that long? I'm going to tell you straight up. If that was me, <laughs> woo, a whole lot of folk, I'm going to say this, would not be going to heaven right now. Can I keep it real? A whole lot of folk would be going someplace else. All right, because I would have came down off that cross. Matter of fact, I don't think I ever would have got to the cross because on that first lick, somebody would have, would, have, would have been in trouble. But you are you are so right. Listen, I, I, I met her. He did it just for you. And watch this. He did it just for me. But y'all, here's my point is this. We have been given this divine protection, this divine promise from God that he would keep us. 
right? He would keep us. And watch this now, you all, we can't, we can't miss this part of the verse in verse 4, the back part of the verse. It says, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Woo, good God Almighty. You're saying, Pastor, he says, his shield shall be thy, or his truth shall be thy shield. Pastor, what does it mean when it says his truth? Listen, God's truth is whatever he says. His word is his truth. I'll prove it to you. Over in John 17, verse 17, it says, sanctify them or separate them through thy truth. Watch this now. Thy word is truth. Now, Pethelary didn't make that up. This, this came from the words of our Lord Jesus. He said the word of God was the truth. So whatever God says is truth. And so what he's saying here is, God says, my word shall be your shield. Woo, good God, y'all. When I saw that man, I began to do a, 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 a jig. Because God's saying, whatever I say in my word, my word shall be your shield. Watch this. Or watch this. It shall be your covering. See, the shield was what you put in front of you while you were fighting. But your buckler is what you used to fight off the onslaught of the attacker. Right? Maybe, maybe you were in close contact. Well, your buckler was able to protect you. It was on the shield to, to guide your shield wherever you want to go. And so God says, my word is able to protect you. Watch this now, wherever we go. Woo, good God Almighty. Somebody should have been shouting right there because the word of God is uh, the substratum of our belief system. And it's designed, watch this, to protect us in our going out, to protect us in our coming in is to protect us against the onslaught of the adversary. Because you are our adversary, the Bible says, he comes in as a roaring lion, watch this now, seeking, searching out whom he may devour. Not only does the devil want to kill his own kids, but he don't mind taking you and I out. Woo, come on, somebody. He wants to take out you and I. You know why? Because he knows it's not that he can't keep us out of heaven, but he knows that if he can use his fiery darts to take us out, he understands, watch this, it will discourage somebody else who's trying to make a decision to give their hearts to Jesus, right? And so the enemy wants to attack us, right, to make sure we don't have that assurance of God's protection. But what he doesn't realize is the more he attacks us and God delivers me, the more assurance I have that no matter what I'm in, God will deliver me. Woo, somebody ought to put in the chat room that God will deliver me. Come on, if you believe that, come on. Somebody put in the chat room, God will deliver me. See, the Bible said that God knows how to deliver the righteous, which means, family, God isn't guessing. He isn't somewhere stretching his head trying to figure out, oh, boy, what am I going to do now? No, God knows how to deliver the righteous. That's you and I. We are his children, and the Father knows how to deliver us. He knows how to free us. He knows how to yank us out of the grips and the claws of the enemy. See, watch this. Look at uh, Ephesians chapter, look at Ephesians chapter 6. Look at verse 16. Watch this, y'all. Look at Ephesians. Woo! Y'all been blessed tonight? Woo! Yo, I'm about to preach myself happy up in here, up in here. Up in here. Praise my God. Watch this, y'all. Ephesians 6. Look at verse 16. It says, Above all things, taking the shield of faith. Watch this now. 
wherewith ye shall be able, watch this now, to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Woo, good God Almighty. He said, above all, taking the shield of faith. Why? Because the shield of faith is the word of God that you and I can be able to quench. That word quench means to put out. See, we think, we, we're praying, God, don't let the darts come. God said, no, the darts are going to come, but I've given you a shield that will quench or put out every fiery dart the devil throws in your life. Woo, somebody ought to give him praise right there in your house. Where you are, you ought to lift both hands to God. Thank you for giving me a weapon I can put out the darts of the devil. Because hear me, you all, I know you are saying, God, don't let them come. No, they're going to come. Listen, the devil don't like you. He, he hates you. Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to kill you. He wants to take you out. But guess what? He can't take you out before it's your time. Oh, come on, somebody. Listen, the devil can't do nothing to you and I without God's permission. Oh, yes, amen. I'll prove it to you. The devil couldn't attack Job. Now, watch this. Job didn't have our covenant. Come on. He didn't have the blood of Jesus. He didn't have the power of the name of Jesus on his side. You and I, we have a covenant. And according to Hebrews, we have a better covenant. Come on, somebody. Full of better promises. Listen, Mr. Price, because you and I have this better covenant full of, full of better promises. Listen, y'all, Job didn't have that. Yet Job got double. Now, wait a minute. If Job got double, and technically he wasn't saved. Bible said he was righteous, but he wasn't uh, blood washed, washed because Jesus hadn't come and died yet. Yet he was righteous. Abraham, Bible said he believed, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Oh, dear God, how much more that you and I, we are washed in the blood of the Lamb of Christ. How much more you and I, who are sons and daughters of the Most High God, how much more do you and I have the same right? And so if Job got double, well, dear God, guess what, y'all? We're under a better covenant, full of better promises. Woo! See, watch this. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. See? In our covenant, God promised you all, in Malachi now, I back up one, in Malachi, God says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Oh, somebody, let me, oh, dear God, let me find it, let me find it. See, if God says he will, if God says he will shut down the devil for our sake, look over in Malachi 3. Let me see, Malachi, y'all hold up, dear God. Y'all been blessed tonight. Y'all, I'm going I'm to shout myself happy up in here. Woo, praise God, praise God. Right here. Let me see. Okay, this is my Dick's Bible, y'all. It got a small, tiny print. Here we go. Malachi 3. Look here at Terah. Look at verse, woo verse 11. Right here. Now, this, y'all, is God. God said, and I will, watch this now, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And watch this now. And he, watch this, he shall not, y'all, watch this, don't miss this. He shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast forth her fruit before its time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, y'all got to see this. Notice God didn't send Gabriel. God didn't send Michael. God didn't send the angel. God said, I will 
come do it myself. Ooh, somebody on a shout right there. God said, I will shut him down for your sake. Now, that was under the old covenant. How much more, you all, is it under the new covenant? Pastor Larry, give me some Bible. Oh, y'all pushing me. Watch this. Go over to Luke. Come on, y'all. Hurry, hurry. Oh, God, time is moving. Come on, class. Luke 3. Look at verse 5. Come on, Luke 3. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Come on, Sergeant. Hurry, hurry. Hurry. Luke 3. Look at verse 5 and verse 6. Man, y'all, I'm sweating, but I'm feeling good. Y'all, y'all been blessed tonight? Watch this. Look at uh, Luke 3, verse 5 and 6. Woo! Come on, Claire. It says, it says, every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low. And watch this, y'all. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Woo-hoo! Good God Almighty. Y'all listen, y'all read it tonight. That's Luke 3 verses 5 through 6. What is God saying? God is simply telling us this that because you are my child, God says, I have watch this, I've obligated myself to take care of you. Can you imagine when the enemy is going uh, trying to go before us, you all, and mess our lives up, making our ways crooked, and God says, I will make the crooked way straight. In other words, when the enemy comes to set potholes and traps in our life, God said, I'll make sure I'm with you. Come on. Over in Isaiah, God says, God says, as you go through the water, or the flood, I'll be there. Listen, in the in the heat of the fire, God says, I'm there with you. And how many of y'all can testify that you've been in some rough places, some fire in your life, but some kind of way, God brought me out. I want somebody to put in the chat room, some kind of way, God brought me out. Come on. Because somebody tonight needs to hear your testimony in some kind of way, God Brought you out. I know you were saying, Pastor Larry, I don't know how God did what he did when God did what he did. But some kind of way, God brought me out. Yes, the enemy tried to kill me, tried to destroy me. But some kind of way, God brought me out. Come on, somebody. Put in the chat room. Some kind of way, God brought me out. Now, now if you're proper, you write some kind of way, God brought me out. But come on. But, but you can put kind of, K-I-N-D-A, some kind of way. God brought me out. Listen, I know so enough. I can't explain it. You recall the boy over in, I want to say Mark chapter 9, when uh, Jesus healed the boy and uh, his parents brought him in the temple. They said, who healed this boy? His parents said, we don't know. Ask him. He's uh, of age. Let him speak for itself. And the boy said, listen, y'all, all I know is I once was blind, but now I see. Pastor Larry, what are you saying? He said, I don't know what's up, but some kind of way, Jesus did what he did. And I came to encourage somebody on tonight, y'all. I got to get up out of here, but I want to encourage you before I go that maybe you can't explain how God's going to heal you. But the word you say, he said, he shall heal all our infirmities. I can't explain how God going to give me money in my pocket. But the word say, my God will supply all of my needs. I can't explain how God kept me in my right mind. But his word say, I'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. I can't explain how God make my enemies turn around and bless me. But the word say, I'll cause your enemies to be at peace with you. Somebody better come on and get me tonight. I can't explain how God does what he does. All I know is when God gives a promise in his word, 
I said it on Wednesday night, but I'll say it again. All I know is that a promise is a promise. And if God said he'll bring me out, I ain't got to know how God going to do it. All I, I know is some kind of way. Woo! Y'all, God's going to do it. They had a song. They sang, uh, Pastor Mark, in the day. It says, put your hands in the hands of the man that steals the water. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, oh, yes, amen. That put your hands in the hand of the man that calmed the sea. Pastor, what did he mean? He simply says, as long as I keep my hand in God's hand, some kind of way. Ooh, yes, God. God's going to find a way to work that thing out in my favor. Some kind of way. That's much you're right. All I got to do is trust and obey. Y'all, that's it. Trust and obey. That's all God wants us to do. See, because when I trust him, watch this now. When I trust him, I obey him. Because my trusting and obey, obeying him tells him, watch this, that God, I believe that what you said is true. Come on. I believe that what you said is true. And that's all God wants to do is to be believed. Because when you and I believe God, listen, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It's not entering into your heart the things God has prepared for those that love him. Woo, good God Almighty. Man, y'all, I'm done. Well, y'all blessed tonight. Come on. I pray your word. I pray, I pray, I pray that you all were blessed tonight. Listen, if you weren't, I have preached myself happy and hungry. Glory to God. Listen, y'all. Oh, that's right. I want to pray tonight for those who are in Florida, who may have lost loved ones and those who may have lost their lives uh, when their hotel collapsed in Florida. I need you all to tonight pray with me that not only will God strengthen the family of those who lost their loved ones, but that not all were lost. That some kind of way that God would rescue or allow some folk to be rescued. Come on, there's some kind of way God would get those who were trapped, who were trapped under under the, the debris, that God would keep them, that God would sustain them, and that God would set them free. I mean, let's pray. Father of heaven, we come to you now. And you say if we ask anything in your name, that you would do it. And tonight, we pray for those, Father, who were in Florida, who were in the hotel on that night, Father, that, that collapsed. And we pray, Father, first for the families of the loved ones who uh, have already been lost. Touch them. Father, bring heal to the hurting. In the name of Jesus, God, comfort the crying. In the precious name of Jesus, God, let them know that you are with them. Let them know, God, that you still love them, that you are still compassionate toward them. In the precious name of Jesus. But God, we send the word to those who may be still trapped in the debris. And we pray, God, that you would send them fresh air. We pray, God, that some kind of way you would send them manna. God, you would provide a way for them to get fresh water and God, even food. God, we don't know how you're going to do what we're asking. But God, we know some kind of way. If you can bring bread in a dry place, you can put water in a desert. Surely, you can give them food and water. And I pray, God, that as a result of this tragedy, that souls are saved, lives are saved. But God, that someone sees your hand, God, even in this travesty, that someone, God, will see your hand. We thank you in advance. 
We thank you in advance. And it is so. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory be to God. Y'all listen, listen to me. I believe by the Spirit of God that God, even in this, will be glorified. All right, family, look, listen. Uh, I'm not sure how to get our apps up to the night, but I encourage you, if you believe in the sowing process, please, ma'am, please, sir, ask God what it is you can give, and I encourage you to be a part of the sowing process and ask God what it is you should give. And listen, however you give, uh, do cash up, you can go dollar sign Pastor Larry 28. That's dollar sign Pastor Larry 28. And sow your most generous seed and believe God. He promised. He said, I'll give back to you. Good measure, press down. Press down, shaking together and running over. I'll cause men to give into your bosom. All right, y'all, don't forget, meet us Sunday morning at 11 a.m. at our new uh, at Zion Travelers. All right, 14875 Wallace Street. That's 14875 Wallace Street. We're doing a combined service with Zion Travelers on that morning. Man, listen, God has given me a word, and I believe, Mother Spirit of God, it is going to refresh you, recharge you, revive you, and watch this, give you a new revelation of the promises of God. I guarantee it, that God will speak to your heart on that Sunday. So come expecting God to touch you and to meet you at the point of your greatest need. Amen. All right, family, my time is up. Uh, it's time for us to get up out of here. All right, pray for us. Thank, I want to thank our entire staff, you all. Many of you all know that our staff is out of town right now. So many, many of them who are generally putting up signs in the chat room, they're out of town. Preferably, they'll be back on tonight and be with us for Sunday. All right, so listen, y'all. Love y'all. Come on. Big call, y'all. Big hugs. Come on. Big hugs. Come on. Come on, family. Come on. Big hugs. Bless your heart, Pastor Green. Bless you. I see you. Oh, I'm sorry. Sister Green. God bless you. Come on, y'all. Big hugs. Come on. Come on. Come on, make some noise. Come on, come on, grow on with it. Make some noise. Mm -hmm. Because I love all y'all. God bless you. God bless you. Come on. Uh, Mr. Green, bless you. Mr. Anderson, God bless you. Mr. Gina, God bless you. Come on. Sister Olivia, God bless you. Sister Michelle, God bless you. See your mama. Bless you, girl. Love you. Big hugs, girl. So Annette, God bless you. Hey, cuz. Rhonda, God bless you. Come on. All of you all who are on the line tonight, God bless you. I love y'all so much. God bless y'all so much. All right. And we'll see you on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Until then, as we always say, you stay in faith and stay focused and know that God has you right where he wants you. God bless you, y'all. Got to get up out of here. Love y'all so much. God bless you. Oh, I'm sorry. Call our prayer line, 708-821-6527. That's 708 708- 821-6527. All right, y'all. Gotta go. Bye.